In this video I'm going to show you how to repair a non-running Briggs & Stratton 550EX series engine. It's got the uh, carburetor down here with the float mechanism on it, traditional bowl. Uh, I'll get the uh, engine model number down in the description of the video. I'm going to call off the, the tools and the uh, things you're going to need to get this done. I'll also list them in the description. Uh, first thing you're going to need to do is determine if what I'm about to show you is going to fix your problem or not. So, in this case, I had you know, on this motor there's no primer. So, make sure you got gas in the tank. Yep, plenty of gas in there. You got oil. Nothing's hanging off or loose. On a motor like this, you should be able to pull it a couple of times and get it to run. Okay, nothing. So, step one, you're going to troubleshoot this. You're going to take off the air cleaner. That just simply pops off. Air cleaner just pulls off. Um, then from here, we're going to shoot some starting fluid into it and see if it runs. If it does run for a second or two, then you'll know that your spark is good, compression is good. You're just not getting fuel into the engine. Okay, so what I do is you can see down here in the uh, opening where the air cleaner was, there's the butterfly, the carburetor. I open it with a screwdriver and then spray some starting fluid in. This is easier with two free hands. Okay, let it close up. Now we'll give that engine a tug and see if it'll run for a second. Okay, so that's good news, because then what that tells me, we've got spark, we've got compression, everything's working, we're just like fuel into the motor for some reason. So next step is we're going to take, we're going to take uh, all these covers off, we're going to take this fuel tank off, this cover comes off the uh, front of the carburetor, and we're going to take the carburetor off and we're going to see what's going on. So on this particular engine, this is a snapper model. Uh, most of these engines are going to have a cover similar to this. It's easiest to start up front here, and you're simply going to twist the two plastic pieces apart until these tabs come out. Then this is going to lift up, and you've got a couple more clips uh, back here. They are right back here. You got a couple more clips back here that go into the black plastic piece. And really, it's just a process of kind of massaging them out. Okay, slide that back over the string. Next step is you have three 8 millimeter head screws that you have to take off. Depending on the age of the mower, if it's been kept outside, these may be rusty and somewhat hard to get out. Okay, once you get all three of those out, this cover just simply lifts up and just slide it back out of the way. There are four bolts or screws, whatever you want to call them, on this air cleaner cover that goes in front of the carburetor. Two of them are the same 8mm bolt heads that we had on our, the engine cover. The other two are two T15 torque screws. I much prefer the Torx, Torx bit screwdriver if you have one. Otherwise, just put an adapter on your ratchet. Now when this comes off, there's a air intake hose 
on the back side of it and it just simply pulls off there's no nothing at all it's just a it's just a friction fit okay just pull it off okay you should check and see if you've got this red seal here uh, sometimes it may come off on the uh, back side of this adapter just make sure it's there and it's not all ripped up and whatever now uh, the next thing here really is to remove the gas tank and then take this there's a gas line right here that uh, goes from the gas tank into the inlet on the carburetor so I'm gonna back this out in the grass so I don't get gasoline everywhere this is just about the worst part of this as far as fuel goes so the fuel tank just pulls up and over uh, there's a metal lip here right outside of the flywheel and I've already loosened up the clamps on the fuel line and I'll show you where they are. So you just pull this fuel tank straight up over this metal housing. So you see here the clamps, or I don't know, these are just the connectors. These things slide down over these slots on this shield by the flywheel. Then you can more clearly see your fuel line here. And you can see I've already slid back. This this clamp here was up here on the inlet. I just slid it back with a pair of needle nose pliers. There's another clamp here um, on the fuel hose where it goes into the or connects onto the fuel tank. You don't really need to mess with that one. Uh, it just depends probably on your mower how it's set up. On this one, it's easier to access this and pull this end of the fuel line off. Maybe on some others, it's easier to pull, pull the fuel line off of the tank. Either way, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm just gonna take this tank and just kind of weasel this line off, hopefully without making too big of a mess. Okay, so we got our, got our tank off here, and you can see we got gas in it. So I know this, this mower had plenty of gas. Should have ran. Pay attention to how, and, and on this mower is pretty easy, pay attention to how these rods are connected. This carburetor is just simply going to slide off of the inlet here where it goes into the head and we're going to basically just maneuver the thing around to get these rods unhooked. Uh, that's pretty easy as far as some of these little carburetors go. I'm going to tip it this way first. Take this one out. There's a lot more flex in this top one than there is in this one. Now, hey, I can see fuel coming out of the carburetor, so I'm pretty sure that we've got a good needle and seat in here. Well, at least that it's letting fuel in. We'll make sure it's not clogged up uh, or that the fuel, the float isn't defective and not stopping the fuel. So now I'm going to go to work on my workbench here, aka side of the barbecue. I'm pretty low budget, in case some of you guys haven't watched my other videos. Like I said, these are the same T15 torque screws that we had on the adapter for the carburetor. I try to use, you know, simple tools and I'll, I'll show you some other tricks I've learned over the years on how to clean these things out and maybe save some money without buying special tools and things like that.